Hi, good afternoon. Um, so in this afternoon, we have seen many different ga gaps in our daily lives. So in my presentation today, I'm going to be talking to you about another kind of gap. So in this gap over here, we're really talking about the spinal cord injuries. So spinal cord injury only happens when there's an there's a, there's a, there's a injury that is occurring to the spinal cord. And when that happens, you leave your, most of the patients will have these kind of spinal cord injuries. If you think about spinal cord injuries, the spinal cord, when it's injured, it will retract from both ends. So it does not matter whether you are taking only a piece of the spinal cord. Eventually, you're going to have this gap. So today, we're going to be talking about how to overcome this gap. So there's a little bit fact about the spinal cord injuries. On the left-hand side, um, you will see the spinal cord injury causes, for example, 38% is due to car crashes, 25% violence, gunshots, or stabbing wounds, and also 7% sports. So, so what that means together, to me, when you add like everything up, made, it's problem. already 70%. Because in the animal kingdom, there's no hard crashes, there's no violence, nobody get, getting stabbed, and also nobody play sports, okay? So 70% the causes are due to human-made causes. So if you understand basically why we are having spinal cord injuries and then most of the causes, then perhaps you will be able to quickly understand the age distribution distributions. So you will see over here, there's a big spike in age group of 17 to 30. So I'm not cu accusing that most of the population over here will be more likely engaged in these kind of activities, but then I want to convince you there might be some connections over here. So the argument that I want to make at this point is that because most of the time in our society, spinal cord injury to the uh, injury occurs to patients at a very young age. And because of the current medical care, they will be able to survive the initial uh, spinal cord injury and then, uh, then live to the full life expect ex lifetime. So basically, we're talking about, this, as a society, we have to care for these patients for a long time. So this is the North American data, uh, the estimated lifetime cost for patient, uh, for patient care per person is about $5 million. So if you look at so the spinal cord we injury got back to history, the Egyptians, like I said, this is a man-made problem. BC. This is basically what they have realized. So if you examine a man with a neck injury and find he is without sensation in both arms and legs and unable to move them and he is incontinent of urine, so basically cannot control urination, it's due to the break of the spinal cord by dislocation of cervical vertebra. This is a condition which cannot be treated. Okay? So that's the conclusion from the Egyptians 1500 BC. And uh, now we're moving a little bit current. So Kaya is a Nobel Prize, Prize winner uh, for, uh, for medicine in 1906 for his contribution in neuroscience. So this is the godfather of the current neuroscience. And basically what he said about the spinal cord injury. In adult centers, the neural paths are something fixed, ended, immutable. Everything may die, nothing may be regenerated. It's for the signs of the future ch uh, to change, if possible, this harsh decree. Okay? So that was about, more, uh, about 100 years ago, and this is the godfather of the current neuroscience, and he basically predicted a lot of things are not happening in the, uh, in, in, in the, in the spinal cord, 
and basically it's very difficult to cure. So these kind of harsh creed eventually was in this year, changed 1981. To give us some Actually, hope. this work was done in McGill University, and uh, they published a very, very milestone scientific paper in science. So this is a very prestigious journal. So the title over here is the axonal uh, elongation in peripheral nervous system bridges after central nervous system injury in adult rats. So I will not get, to get into the details, but then by only showing this little small graph over here. So this is the key concept they designed. So what they have done is, this is, a spi uh, this is the spinal cord where they have created this artificial spinal cord injury. And then what they have, they have done is basically taking a bridge that is, that is actually a piece of peripheral nervous system nerve in here and bridging it over here. So what they have found is actually there's a robust growth of these nerve regeneration from the central nervous system, in this particular case, is the spinal cord. Both nerve fibers are growing along the peripheral nervous system, okay? So this is basically kind of a, the harsh decree that we just talked about, kind of throw this into the air and say, okay, so perhaps that's not true because the regeneration is taking place, but it's not in the system that we want them to regenerate, okay? So that's the idea, and uh, so we took that idea as engineers, and then we say, how can we mimic these kind of situations to enhance the regeneration? Because certainly there's a hope. So in engineering, we kind of do some research, and then basically one of the pro approach, approaches is so if you imagine this is a spinal cord that is injured over here, so a lot of things are gonna happen over here. So now we know a lot about why spinal cord injury does not happen. So for example, in terms of the re regeneration, so this uh, the regeneration is limited due to the injuries results in cell death, and also neurons, we know it already, they do not proliferate to replace the lost cells. So you don't get re the neurons replenished. And also the central nervous system, including the brain and the spinal cord, it actually is actively inhibiting uh, the nerve regeneration. Okay, so this is a quite unique to the, to the, spinal, cord, uh, to the spinal cord. So in order to tr address all of these problems, we are basically devising some tubes that can be inserted at the site of the injury. So what the tubes can do is basically to, as a vehicle to, replace, uh, to release molecules to promote regeneration, and also at the same time to be able to modulate the inhibitory environment. So not only we're gonna give you the incentives to regenerate, but also we're gonna get rid of the the, uh, the, uh, uh, the inhibitory environment. And also at the same time, maybe we can also use this one as a vehicle to transplant cells to replace the lost cells. And also we will be able to, in, in engineering field, we also will be able to work with some of the materials to guide regeneration. So what I'm trying to show you over here, just to show you some of the engineering innovations in guiding the nerve growth, for example, we will be able to, to fabricate very, very small grooves, very kind of mi micro feature grooves to be able to guide the nerve fiber growth, okay? And uh, also the same idea, actually, we can basically electro spinning some of the fibers in a very nice orientation where we can put into the tube, then we will be able to guide the regeneration. So it's all about the guidance to provide the cues. So talking about the cues, not only we are giving the cells these kind of physical cues, but also we can also give them the chemical cues. So there's no grooves, flat surface, but on top of the surface, you will see two different kind of regions where only the cells can, will only grow along one lane as opposed to all over the place. So this is done by chemical cues. 
So the cells will be able to sense, to sense these kind of different, uh, different, uh, different, uh, dif differences on the, on the surfaces. So this is quite interesting. Uh, actually, it's, it's done uh, at University of Ottawa. My collaborator actually using uh, aspar as asparagus that you can normally get from, uh, from Loblaws. And by basically, by processing these, uh, these uh, vegetables, you will be able to get very nice, long conduits from these kind of fibers. So the, the, the idea is maybe we can use these kind of conduits to guide the regeneration. And talking about the 3D printing, we will also be able to print uh, these kind of tubes using the materials that will be able to, 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 to gel in situ. So when you print it, it's not solidified yet, but you, when, after you print it, after shining the UV light, it will, it will glue together. So these things, you can print it out like these kind of the spinal cord, and, uh, and then completely mimicking the size and the shape of the spinal cord. So all of that, we have the tools uh, in our toolbox that we can, we can work to help to regenerate the spinal cord. So last one, actually, this is our research. Uh, we are developing the tube. Now we're making it biodegradable. So the material will degrade over time inside of your body. And also, we're using nanoparticles to be impregnated into the tube. So actually, it will give you the MRI uh, image. Whereas over here, if you don't use the nanoparticle, even though we Im implanted this tube over here, you will not be able to see the presence of the tube, even though you can see over here, this is the spinal cord, and uh, actually uh, we, we created this spinal cord injury already, uh, and also inserting a piece of tube, but then you will see, uh, you won't be able to see the, the contrast uh, to, to appreciate the presence of the tube, whereas over here, you know there's something going on in here. So the next approach I want to briefly introduce because I know many of you have uh, already done some, uh, some reading about this, um, I'm pretty sure. So the cell transplantations. So the idea over here is basically transplant cells to help the regeneration. So the type of cells we can transplant into uh, the Schwann cells. So these cells are known to help uh, provide some growth factors and provide some growth support to the axons. And macrophages, so far, is not completely understood, the mechanism, but it has been shown to be working to contribute to the, to the clearing of dead cells and debris. And also the stem cells and the neuronal, neuronal, neuronal progenitor cells is basically kind of just replacing the damaged cells and also uh, to be able to migrate to the site of injury. But there are challenges, for example, significant amount of cell death after tra uh, transplantation. We're talking about over 90% of cell death once you implant them into the site of injury. Uh, so the, the, uh, the possible solutions is using cell encapsulating cocoons. Okay, so the, the protective layer outside of the, the cell clusters will help the cells to go through the harsh environment at the very beginning when, once you implant the cells. And also, with regard to the stem cells, the ethical issues related to the stem cell uh, sourcing is always a problem. So uh, the, the solution now, you will see uh, people are using the endogenous stem cells. So these are the cells directly from the patients. You don't have to take the cells from someone else. So this is last slide. We have gone through a long way. About 100 years ago, there's no way we can regenerate. And then about uh, 40 years ago, this milestone research basically kind of opened the door. And uh, with all the toolboxes and the, all the technology, the, nano, the nanoparticles, the 3D printing, the non-invasive imaging, I think we have all the tools that we really need to overcome the spinal cord injuries, so to overcome the gap. So currently, there's no magic cure. 
and uh, looks like it's going to be a combination of all kinds of approaches. And because of that, it requires multidisciplinary efforts. And uh, I'm also counting every one of you in the audience um, to, uh, to, do some, to do some fantastic work to overcome the spinal cord injuries. And thank you. <laughs>